Now, this will be a short lecture on pain and on suffering in the context of hidden nobles, Hellens, and later inventions of Judeo Christianity that epitomized suffering. Well, think about it. How much suffering did you endure in life? How did you relate to it? How did you overcome it? Now compare yourself to Jesus, like my life was hell, I must admit, and I suffered a thousand fold more than that bloody, pathetic, Essen Galilean liar. Now the Christians say, but he died for humanity, he suffered for humanity. Well, bullshit. Even if he was crooked, the pain was not sufficient to suffer for all of us. So the doctrine is ineffective. Now, let's look at it from the pagan perspective and the Buddhist perspective. First, I would like to read a fragment from On Pain by Ernst Jünger, a German soldier uh, during the First and Second World War, later a writer. So, of all animals that serve as nourishment to men, lobster must suffer the most torturous death, for it is set in cold water on a hot flame. Cookbook for household of all estates, Berlin 18. 48. If you watch the movie Lobster, you might get an additional pen here. Now, does a little Bobby cry for any ache? The mother calls him in the fashion. What a coward to cry for a trifling pain. What will you do when your arm is cut off in battle? What when you are called upon to commit harakiri? In Azunotibe Bushido, Tokyo 2560 from 1900. Now, there are several great and unalterable dimensions that show a man's stature. Pain is one of them. It is the most difficult in the series of trials one is accustomed to call a life. An examination dealing with pain is no doubt unpopular. Yet it is not only revealing in its own right, but it can also shed light on a series of questions preoccupying us at the present. Pain is one of the keys to unlock men's innermost being as well as the world. Whenever one approaches the point where man proves himself to be equal or superior to pain, one gains access to the sources of his power, his character and ethos, might I add, and the secret hidden behind his dominion. Tell me your relation to pain and I will tell you who you are. Pain as a measure of man is unalterable, but what can be altered is the way he confronts it. Man's relation to pain changes with every significant shift in fundamental belief. This relation is in no way set. Rather, it eludes our knowledge and yet is the best benchmark by which to discern a race. We can observe this clearly today since we have a novel and peculiar, peculiar relation to pain in the world without binding norms. Through examination of this new kind of relation to pain, we now intend to secure an elevated point of surveillance from which we may be able to catch sight of things still imperceptible on the ground. After walking through valleys of pain and darkness, climb the mountain to look behind. Our question is what role does pain play in the new race we call the walker that is now making its appearance on its historical stage? Now that is inbuilt into Jünger's philosophy, however here I will switch to the Library of Tibetan Classics, the mind training that I have in PDF form 2. Now, because of multiple aspirations, I have defied the tragic tale of suffering. Suffering is one of the most, one of the noble truths of Buddhism. Suffering is in existence. How you overcome it is what makes a hero. Bodhisattvas are heroes that overcame suffering and did submit to it, like that pathetic Galilean. So, and have taken instructions to subdue self-grasping. Now, even if I die, I have no remorse, for I have conquered pain and suffering. Here we go to Nietzsche. Hmm. What was fitting for priestly people the most entrenched priestly vengefulness? It was the Jews who, rejecting the aristocratic value equation, good equals noble equals powerful equals beautiful equals happy equals blessed, ventured with our inspiring inconsistency or consistency to bring about a reversal and held it in the teeth of the most unfathomable hatred, the hatred of the powerless, saying one those who suffer are good, only the poor, the powerless, the lowly are good, the suffering, the deprived, the sick, the ugly are the only pious people. Now in this reversal, most 
magnificent ox of crooks were elevated on the worldly stage, worshipped by the ugly, the poor and the sick. Observe it through the centuries as it unfolds. The only pious people, the ones who are saved, salvation is for them alone. Whereas you rich, the noble and powerful, you are eternally wicked, cruel, lustful and satiate godless. Mind you, the noble pagans, the senate of Rome. Now, we know who became heir to this Jewish revaluation, that is Christianity, with regard to the huge and incalculably disastrous initiative taken by the Jews with the most fundamental of all declarations of war against all things noble, true and beautiful. I recall the words I wrote on another occasion, that's in Beyond Good and Evil, namely, that the slaves' revolt in morality begins with the Jews, a revolt which has 2000 years of history behind it and which has only been lost of sight because it was a victorious. The simplicity of the masses made Christianity victorious with the onslaught of the religion created by Constantine from a rabble of Gnostic pole precariats. Now, but you don't understand that, you don't have eyes for something that needed two millennia to achieve victory, and so on, so on. I suggest really reading or reading the genealogy of morals inside of the Christian centuries. Now, you may notice that through my lectures I'm an antagonist towards Christianity, not necessarily Hebraism or Judaism. That's because Christian pigs with inferiority complex towards me and my exploits and my life, which was grand, I rest assured, ruined my life in the very name of the fact that they were pathetic, worthless swine. Now, let us move to Werner Jäger's Paideia, Arete. So to be noticed by the providential gods, you need to be of stature, of what, to prove yourself worthy, not to pretend that you're worthy, not to self-bash or lacerate yourself and pray, because this is only invoking scorn and contempt in the providential divinities.